In this In Vivo 10 demonstration, I'm going to show you how to start a new project, how to import some text documents that have been formatted in Microsoft Word, how to reformat them so that they are ready for auto-coding, how to do auto-coding, and then how to save a copy of the project to another location. So let's get started by, with a new project by clicking the New Project button. We need to give the new project a title, and I'll just simply call it New Project. We have to decide where we want to have the project saved. Right now it's in the Documents folder, but I'd like to change that, so I'm going to browse out and have it saved on the desktop. I'll click Save, and then OK. In Vivo will start a new project. Now, the project that we're going to be working on today comes from a research project that has surveys of parents where they answer five short questions and also has other kinds of data like audio and video files and photographs of the children's journal products. Today we're first going to import some of the survey entries that the parents completed so in order to do that we need to go to the external data folder, to the documents and we're going to find the documents. We've got to browse out onto the desktop. And in this case, they are on the desktop in a folder that says Backpack Data. So I'm just going to import a few of these to begin with. Um, the ones you see here come from one single classroom. So we're going, to, we're going to import some of those together. So I'm going to import the first three. And I'll tell it to open. We can do them all at once. Tell it OK and it's going to import them as internal documents. Now you can have internal documents and external documents. Internal documents are actually stored as part of the program. External documents are stored outside the program and later when we work with audio and video files this is going to be important because many of the, uh, the audio and video files that we may use are really too big to be included inside of the in vivo project in terms of getting them to work correctly. So right now though we're going to use the internal folder. You can see in the internals folder that we have these three files that I've just imported. Now they're all surveys, and I think actually I'd like to have them in a folder that's called Surveys. So I'm going to create a new folder by pointing to the Internals folder, right-clicking, and we'll get an option for New Folder. And I'm just going to name that Surveys. Click the OK button. Now, in order to get the three, the three files into the Surveys folder, I'm just going to highlight them and then drag and drop them on top of the Surveys folder. And you'll see when I double click on the Surveys folder that, that they're now inside. These surveys can be browsed, that is we can take a look at them, by simply clicking on the, on the file. And you'll see that it's going to open up to the right and all the files are listed to the left. Now, I think I would like to see a little bit more of my text here, so I'm going to grab the divider between these two windows and pull it sideways, giving me much more space for reading the text. You see that the surveys have five questions, and in these surveys, I've already formatted them so that the question is in a particular style, and the answer is in the next style. So we can actually look at that. We can highlight that and go to the Home tab. And here we can see which heading style. This is in Heading 1. And then the answers to the questions should be in the normal style. This is, I've done this on purpose. Each of the questions has been typed in exactly the same way. And each of the answers follows in the next heading style. If we do this consistently, it's possible to code automatically. So what we want to do is to have every question be in the Heading 1 style, and then the paragraphs that follow it to be in the Normal style. That will let us auto-code these transcripts. Now, I'm going to actually uh, take a look on my desktop at some of the other transcripts because I want to show you how we got them into that style. It's really probably easier to do this in Microsoft Word before you import them. 
um, though you can make the changes afterwards. So we're going to look at another one that I have not worked on. Um, this one, they were it was typed consistently, but no heading styles have been applied. So this is in Microsoft Word, and I'm just going to highlight my question, and I'm going to come up to the top bar and click Heading 1, and it will change it in, into the Heading 1 style. I'm going to do that for e each of the questions. And um, it just takes me a minute to do this for this little data set, but you can imagine this would take a really long time if this was a large data set. So knowing that you're going to want to code this way, um, you simply just need to be creating a template for, for typing your transcripts of your survey responses so that it's done consistently from the very beginning. But in this case, I've just uh, taken care of that quite quickly. I'm going to save it. And now we're going to import that one along with the others. So we're going to go back to our InVivo project, and as you recall, in order to import, we're going to um, go to the External Data tab, then to Documents. I'm going to browse for the file that I just fixed, which was the Kenneth file. I'm going to open it and import it. Okay, we've got one more. and. I want to show you how you can go ahead and do the formatting after a file has been imported. So let's also import the one more file. Let's import the last one that I haven't uh, fixed the headings on. We'll import the Paul file. Do it by the same process that we've just been using. Okay. Now, we, in order to look at the Paul file, we're simply going to click on it here in List View. Okay. Now, in order to make a change in this file, I've got to always make sure that I click to edit right here above the top in the top of the window. So I'm going to do that. Now, I can do the same kind of formatting that I just did in Microsoft Word here within in Vivo. And the way I go about doing that is going back to the Home tab, and this is where we'll see that we'll see the styles. Notice that the highlighted section of text says Normal, and actually I want it to say Heading 1. So I'm going to change that here within InVivo. Now I'm going to just show you that if we look at the, the answer twice, sometimes more, that it still is normal. So we're going to leave it just like it is. I'm going to go down to the second one, do the same kind of change, change it to Heading 1. Uh, I'll just do it for each of the five. And of course, once again, because this is a very small data set, this is not this is no big problem to do but still for you know 700 children this would take us some considerable time so the way we take care of this problem if we think we're going to want to autocode when you have something like a, a structured survey or a structured interview is to create a template with the headings already embedded that someone can use to actually type in the transcripts of the responses and then uh, all of the files that are in side this particular project will already be formatted. Okay, and you can just do the formatting and then you are ready to go with that. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to autocode. So the idea here is that we would like to have all of the data that's from question one for all the respondents in one particular node. And the way that we want to go about doing that is to autocode. And we want all the data for question two together, all the data from question three together. We're actually not going to move the data, but we're just going to essentially code it to a node for question one, a node for question two, a node for question three. We could do this manually, but it's much quicker to do it through autocoding for this particular sort of data. So to do this, we're going to select all the documents that we want to autocode. So I'm going to just drag down and select them all together. We're going to go to the Analyze tab, clicking it above here, and we're going to click Autocode. This will give us a dialog box which asks us which paragraph styles we're going to be using. And you notice here that there actually are two choices. We can code by paragraph style or by structure. Um, and we can talk about that later, but right now we're going to do paragraph style. And, and it's heading one that we're going to be using um, because that's the kind of style that we've applied to our, each of our questions. So I'm going to click heading one and click the right arrow button 
and it's adding the selected style, letting us know that we're going to code heading one content to a new node. Now it asks whether we want to code at nodes under an existing node, but I actually didn't make an existing node, so I want to do that now. So I'm going to code actually to a new node, and um, I need to give it a name. I'm going to call it survey questions. And I'm going to say OK. And we should have the coding done just that quickly. Let's look under nodes. There's our new node that I just created called survey questions. Let's expand that a little bit so we can take a look at it. I'm going to click the little plus button. And there you have it. Each one of the documents now has the data that is an answer to question one coded under the question one node. And we can take a look at that by clicking on it. And you now see the content of the node over here in the view window. I can grab it and expand it. There we go. We're right now browsing the question one node, and we can see what answers were given to each of the number one questions by the five different families. Okay, we see both the we see both the question. Here, here are actually the the documents. We see both the question and the answer. Now, this just codes all of the content to a question one node. As we end the project, I'm going to show you how to save a backup at another location besides the desktop where I've saved the original copy of this project. So go to the File tab, but if I go to the Manage tab, I can find the Copy Project choice. I'm going to give it the name of New Project Backup 2. and I'm going to click and have it saved instead of on my desktop and this time I'm going to have it on my removable disk I'm going to click there and tell it to save and it'll save a copy out on my removable disk this may be particularly important if you're working on a public computer and you need to bring your project to and from the computer each time you work